The world's growing hostility towards Israel is evident in current events and headlines. The ongoing conflict in the region, including the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the threats posed by Iran, are reflections of the prophetic tensions described in the Bible. However, regardless of all these, there is hope for Israel, just as God said in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel will be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You will never be put to shame or disgraced, to ages everlasting. In this video, we will delve into the extraordinary characteristics of Israel and how its existence, struggles, and triumphs are signs confirming end-time prophecies. We will explore the persecution and intensification of worldwide hatred towards Jews as indicators of the approaching conclusion of this age. Israel is not just another nation. It is a land where divine destiny and human history intersect. The story of Israel is one of resilience, faith, and fulfillment of ancient prophecies. From its biblical roots to its modern-day challenges, Israel stands as a testament to God's faithfulness and sovereignty. The nation's rebirth in 1948, for instance, was a fulfillment of Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones coming to life. Ezekiel chapter 37. This miraculous event marked the beginning of a new era, one that would be seeing the gathering of Jewish people from all corners of the earth back to their ancestral homeland. However, Israel's existence has not been without trials. The nation has faced relentless opposition, wars, and attempts to undermine its legitimacy. The intensifying global animosity towards Israel and the Jewish people is a clear sign of the end times, as foretold in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. On that day, when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. I don't know so much about Israel as a nation outside the Bible until recent years. If someone had asked me their population, I would have said maybe 200 million or even more. I was startled when I found out that it was such a small nation with less than 10 million people. It was here I began to ponder on many things. How are they able to settle and flourish surrounded by larger notions who want them wiped off the map? How are they able to manage their economy and build a society better than some nations with more natural resources and higher populations than them? Why are many people against them around the world? All these questions were a genuine desire to understand, and I discovered that God had already answered from His Word. You see, just like I said earlier, Israel is not just another nation on earth. We do not necessarily need to look to Abraham first to understand. Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2 says it clearly from the mouth of God Himself to His people, reminding them who they truly are. It says, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. Take note of the words. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. This is not natural selection or a political election. It is a divine covenant, a bond made by God between himself and the offspring of Abraham to be their God forever. In a moment, I will show you God's own assurance about Israel and the eternal guarantee that no one can successfully wipe them off the face of the earth, no matter how many nations rise against them. I will also show you all of the attacks on Israel are prophetic events that will lead to the appearance of Christ and the end of the world. Satan recognizes this extraordinary election of God's people. So, from the beginning, he has constantly been raising conflicts against them, Yet again and again, he keeps failing. Why? Because God has promised that his people will stand strong and not be moved by anyone. He will always stand by to defend them. Friends, the persecution of Jews throughout history and the rise of anti-Semitism in recent times are alarming indicators that we are living in the last days. Although this will involve heartbreaking atrocities, they are all a fulfillment of prophecy, demonstrating the infallibility of God's Word and wrapping up things in the world as we know it. Jesus' warning in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 does not just refer to believers of Jesus alone, but also to the Israelites as a whole. 
Think of it this way. Every believer in Christ becomes a seed of Abraham spiritually. In other words, they become spiritual Jews and partakers of the covenant of Israel, regardless of where they come from. As Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13 says, Remember that all that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from any relationship with Him, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, with no share in the sacred messianic promise and without knowledge of God's agreements, having no hope in His promise, and living in the world without God. But now, at this very moment, in Christ Jesus you are who once were so very far away from God, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. As Jesus told us that when we become his followers, that is spiritual Israelites, the world, which is under the dominion of the devil, will hate us and persecute us. They will try to corrupt or destroy us. We become walking targets the moment we become a part of God's family. Does this make us bad people? No. Does it mean we choose incorrectly to follow Jesus? No. Does it mean that our suffering at the hands of the wicked and those who hate us will affect our inheritance? No, it won't. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 gives us comfort that, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The spiritual battles and confrontations we have to face for being believers are nothing compared to our glorious destiny in Christ as long as we remain in Him. But this video is not about our status as Christians alone, but how our lives are a mirror of Israel. This is the reason for the intense hatred and persecution they suffer. Ours we face at a spiritual and personal level, but theirs they suffer at a national level. It may not be stated that it is because of Christ, but because they are God's covenant people, the ones God chose to call His own and to protect. Now, take note that all of Israel's plights, the attacks, and the persecutions in the past and today are mentioned as part of their eternal journey. However, this is beyond them. Israel is like the checklist, like a reminder alarm used to signal different events or activities. For example, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 33, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. Israel and one of the many other signs, a major one at that, which God will use to play a significant role in His end-time agenda, and as God's people, we must recognize this and get ourselves ready and involved. As believers, we must recognize that Israel's role in God's plan is far from over. The Apostle Paul, in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, spoke of a future time when all Israel will be saved. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. This points to a significant event in end-time prophecy when the Jewish people will recognize Jesus as their Messiah. Today, it may not seem so, but God's word that never fails will make it happen. As we see that many people are already turning to Jesus among the Jews, the time is getting closer and closer each day. But what are some of the events that will precede this momentous occasion apart from many turning to Jesus? How can we discern the signs of the times from the current situation in Israel and the Middle East? One of the major prophetic events that will affect Israel is the rise of a powerful leader, the Antichrist, who will make a covenant with many nations for seven years, as stated in Daniel 9. This leader will initially appear to be a peacemaker and a friend of Israel, but he will eventually break his covenant and unleash a great tribulation on the Jewish people and believers all around the world, as prophesied by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 21. Another prophetic event that will involve Israel is the invasion by a coalition of nations led by Gog, the ruler of Magog. What are these nations led by Gog, the ruler of Magog? 
The mention of Gog and Magog, along with the nations they lead, can be found in the Bible in Ezekiel chapters 38 through 39 and Revelation chapter 20. These passages are often the subject of interpretation and debate, but they are generally understood as symbolic representations of a future coalition of nations that will come against God's people. These nations, which some scholars believe to include Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and others, will attack Israel with a massive army in an attempt to plunder its resources and destroy its people. However, God will intervene supernaturally and destroy these invaders with fire, hailstones, earthquakes, and pestilence. God's guarantee for the preservation of His people will never be broken. He said in Isaiah chapter 41, verses 11 through 13, All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Although we have the Palestinian conflict now, more aggressions from other nations will arise to try to bring the country down. All of these will come to fulfill what God already said about His people preceding the appearance of Christ. A third prophetic event that will impact Israel is the Battle of Armageddon. This will be the final showdown between the forces of good and evil at the end of the tribulation period. The Antichrist and his allies will gather their armies to wage war against Jesus Christ and his followers at a place called Armageddon. There, Jesus will defeat his enemies with a sharp sword that comes out of his mouth, as written in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. Saints, these events may seem distant or improbable to some people, but they are based on God's infallible word and his unchanging purposes. They are also consistent with what we see happening in our world today, increasing hostility towards Israel and Jews, escalating tensions between Iran and Israel, growing alliances between Russia, Turkey, and other Islamic nations, rising influence of globalism and secularism, declining morality and spirituality, widespread deception and apostasy, natural disasters and pandemics, and wars and rumors of war. These are not mere coincidences. They are signs that we are living in the end times and that Jesus Christ is coming soon. As we witness these signs unfolding before our eyes, let us be reminded that these are not reasons to fear or despair, but to rejoice in hope. As Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 28, When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. As we await His glorious appearance, let us live with an eternal perspective, turning from a life of sin, praying for the peace of Jerusalem as God's Word admonished us in Psalm 122, verse 6, and standing in solidarity with God's chosen people. Let us also be vigilant and wise, making the most of every opportunity, for we do not know the day or hour of Christ's return. Beloved, as we await His glorious appearance, let us be lights in a dark world, sharing the hope and love of Jesus with all who cross our path. Friends, we would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Please feel free to share your requests so that both we and our other viewers can pray for you. This way, we can create a community of believers who support each other in prayer. And don't worry if you don't see a reply in your prayer request. It doesn't mean that your prayer wasn't prayed for. God is working behind the scenes and He hears your prayers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. May God bless you as you seek to understand His heart for this nation and for His people. In these turbulent times, let us remain conscious of the return of Christ, living in readiness and fervently praying for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. When you hear the name Israel, what comes to your mind? This nation of not more than 9.2 million people carries a unique heritage that is beyond the earth realm. In this video, we will share a deep secret with you about Israel that you probably never knew before. By now, you are familiar with the news about what is going on with Israel and probably are familiar with the mixed feelings associated with the issue too. However, this small nation, its people and government 
will be in the center of world-changing events like you have never seen. Many end-time events are unfolding and will affect every soul on the earth, including you. And by the end of this video, you will see how Israel will play a pivotal role in the state of things in this end-time age. What makes Israel so special? What do they have and why do we need to consider them? You see, Israel is a land where history, faith, culture, and determination intertwine in a captivating narrative and has lasted for ages. This nation's creation fulfilled ancient prophecies and provided a homeland for Jewish people who had endured centuries of exile and persecution. Yet, this story is marked by the ongoing sad and contentious struggle over territory with the Palestinian people who believe they have a legitimate claim to the land that is now part of Israel. In the mid-20th century, Israel emerged as a modern nation-state, an embodiment of long-held dreams and aspirations. It stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of a people who, in the face of adversity, reclaimed their biblical homeland. However, this renaissance was not without its complications. The conflict between Israel and Palestine over land, deeply rooted in historical, political, and religious factors, persists as one of the most enduring and challenging issues in the contemporary world. This contest of borders, identities, and the quest for coexistence has defied easy resolution, and it continues to shape not only the region, but also global diplomacy. Israel's journey, from its inception to the present, is a compelling narrative of rebirth, struggle, and survival, intricately woven into the complex fabric of the Middle East's historical, political, and cultural dynamics. It's a story that demands our attention, understanding, and empathy, as we seek to unravel the multifaceted issues that define this nation's past and future. Even without first looking at the Bible, when we look at this nation from secular lenses, we already see a fascinating people worth learning from and connecting to. However, they are more than that. Paul the Apostle, writing about Israel in Romans 9, 3-5, said, For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption of sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human history of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. These words are not exaggerated. No, they aren't. When I tell you that this nation is something from beyond the natural realm of earth, this is the summation of it all. Deuteronomy 7.6 says, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be His people, His treasured possession. This all connects back to God's first encounter with the patriarch, Abraham, in Genesis 12, 1-3. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is the initial promise to Abraham where God chooses him and his descendants, the people of Israel, to be his special people on earth. When they came out from Egypt, God renewed this special covenant with them by the law in the wilderness in Exodus 19, 5 and 6, and said, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. These verses are a confirmation that Israel, the Jews, are not just a group of nine million people who settled somewhere. They are not Israelites because they occupy the land of Israel. 
They are so because of their connection to God through the Abrahamic covenant. And this is so important for us to both see, understand, and embrace. You see, no matter who occupies Israel's territory today, it's not the land that makes the people. They are already chosen by God, and that is not going to change until this world passes. God's covenant of preservation and separation of the nation for Himself will stand forever. He Himself said so in Jeremiah 31, 35-37. This is what the Lord says, He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is His name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will Israel ever cease being a nation before me. This is what the Lord says, Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below searched out will I reject the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. You can see these words right here yourself. Yes, Israel is not a perfect nation. Yes, Israel will offend many people, and many nations will rise against her, as we have seen in the past and even now. However, no matter what the whole world might do, no one has the people to erase God's holy people from the face of the earth. Absolutely no one. No matter how many they are, or how many times they try, Israel's heritage is one in which we can learn a lot about God, His faithfulness to His words and His people, and the assurance of those who have a relationship with Him. So, what does this mean to you, and how does it affect you? As we draw close to the end of our days on earth, I mean, in these end times, here are two things we must keep in mind as believers. 1. Both spiritually and physically, God has a hope of restoration now and later. Paul wrote in Romans 11:24, After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? If you read the entire chapter 11 of Romans, Paul talks extensively about Israel as the original branches of God on earth, and every believer who becomes a spiritual Jew by faith in Christ as the wild branches that were grafted in place of the original, which was removed because of their sins. It may look so hopeless, but he prophetically declared that for the sake of God's everlasting covenant, no matter how long it takes, the original branches will be restored. In other words, although Israel itself may not even understand its place in God's plan or in Christ, although they may not even believe in Jesus as the Messiah, yet God has them in mind. And before the end comes, they will be restored, and Christ will take His place as King and Lord over His people indeed. Why are these words important to note to you as a believer? One is that God is faithful, and through your connection to Jesus, you also are in covenant with Him that He will not break until Christ comes. You can rest assured that no matter what happens to you, for your faith's sake, no devil in hell can change God's mind concerning you as His child who is living for Him. Those who turn their backs on God are the ones who shut themselves out of the blessing of His covenant and faithfulness. This is also important for you because it will help you see the Jews from a more positive position than the global view. This is important because you have to pray for Israel. There is a blessing for those who bless God's people, and there is a curse on those who curse them. 2. Israel's salvation plays a role on the Lord's eventual return. Dear Saints, apart from being at the center of many end-time events, like the one stated in Zechariah 12 and Ezekiel 28 through 39, where nations will rise against her from all around the world. One strong biblical prophecy is the one we see from the words of Paul in Romans 11. Indeed, before the end comes, 
Israel as a nation will be truly grafted with the Holy Church of God as one body in Christ. And Jesus tells us that when we start to see these things happening with Israel, then we must know that it's time for the end to come. So, what should we do with this understanding? Live ready. That's it. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. As we watch different biblical prophecies being fulfilled both in Israel and in other nations of the world, let us be reminded that our time on earth is short, and like the wise virgins in Jesus' parable, we have to be alert, with fresh oil in our burning lamps. These words in Ephesians are a steady reminder on how we should live, as wise people, making the use of the time because the days are evil. Beloved, the days are and will continue to remain evil. You may not be able to change the world because it is under the dominion of darkness. However, you must remember that you are the light because of Jesus. You carry a greater covenant that never fails, no matter how long it takes. You belong to God's spiritual Israel, and you are not hopeless. One day, the Lord will return to take us home with Him. Therefore, we must be ready. Take advantage of the time. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop reading or hearing God's Word in the Bible. Shut out anything that doesn't agree with God's Word. Stand out from the crowd and stand for God, even if you have to stand alone. It may be tough, but be glad and rejoice. You are an overcomer in Christ. Your end is glorious. This is what the Bible in Revelation 12.12 12 has been saying all along. The verse reads, Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. This verse is very explicit, and it tells us why the world is the way it is today. Where this verse says, Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you we can establish that the devil is now on earth. But that's not the only thing it says. It also tells us that since he's been thrown down to earth, the devil's angry because his time is short. So he knows he has a short time before the end of the world when the Lord Jesus Christ will return to rescue his people once and for all and take them to be in heaven with him. You can also understand from these words that the time is not only short for the devil, but also short for us here on earth. Could this be the reason why the devil's more actively introducing different kinds of sin and evil into this world than has ever been seen before? I believe that it is the reason. Remember that this verse isn't talking about a future event. Yes, the book of Revelation is full of imagery, symbolism, and literal messages. And this verse is one with both a historical meaning and a prophetic warning. You see, it speaks of the war in heaven when Lucifer, also known as Satan, the dragon or the devil, along with all of his angels, fought against the other angels led by the archangel Michael. The angels of God defeated and cast out Satan and his own angels, who would later become demons out of heaven and down to earth. Now, having been cast out, Satan, knowing he can't defeat God, is out to cause chaos on the jewel of God's creation, humanity, and wreak havoc on earth. I remember watching a wildlife documentary some years ago. It was about a rhinoceros who was tranquilized, captured, and taken into a reserve to keep its species from poachers who were hunting them to extinction. By the calculations, these wildlife experts knew that they only had a short time before the rhino would wake up and hurt anyone it saw. And they were right. As soon as they settled it down and were scrambling to safety over fences, the rhino woke up and charged at the nearest expert who successfully evaded and shut the gate just as the rhino slammed into it. This is how the devil is operating now. Like an angry animal recently released, he's on a rampage across the earth, 
furiously seeking to destroy everything in his path. Thus, we see why Peter wrote in his letter to the saints, which includes us, in 1 Peter 5.8, Be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Jesus also warned us in Matthew 26.41, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The devil is not a lion. Only Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah in the Bible. However, the enemy, just like a lion, or like the rhino I talked about earlier, prowls the earth seeking revenge against God by leading souls astray from the truth. Apart from his time being short, the devil is also angry because he was once an angel of God who was cast out of heaven for rebellion and pride. And since then, he's been waging his own war against the Lord by deceiving the world and leading souls into destruction. The devil knows that God loves his creation, man, but he also knows that God will judge sin and anyone who turns away from God will end in damnation. This is why he came and brought deception to Adam and Eve by tempting them to eat the forbidden fruit, thus turning them against God and causing them to bring God's wrath on themselves. This is how sin was brought into the world, as the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 5.12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned. And this is why sin and evil are rampant all over the world today, regardless of race, background, or social status. The devil hopes to condemn everyone to eternal damnation through the evils, temptations, and weaknesses of the flesh. However, saints of God, you need not worry. Why? Because Jesus has already won the victory for our salvation on the cross of Calvary. You see, even though Revelation 12, 12 tells us where and why all the evils, abominations, and chaos in the world today are on the increase, we can find comfort in these words in 1 John 5, 4. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. As well as 1 John 4.4, 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The only people who should worry about the threat of the devil on earth are those who haven't come to Jesus and surrender yet. As long as the life of Christ is in you, you have a hope of victory over the deceptions and evils the devil will throw your way. Why? Because through your faith in Jesus and his finished work on the cross, you are now a partaker in his victory over the devil. As a believer, we take comfort in the fact that Jesus has already won the victory over sin and Satan. And through him, we have the power to resist the temptations and evils of this world. Let us therefore stand firm in faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's promised that those who hold on to him to the end will be rewarded for all eternity. Matthew 24, 13 But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. In other words, Jesus is our security. In these last days, this short time before God wraps everything up in history forever, there will be great troubles. These are not troubles caused by God, but troubles caused by the devil as a final act to lead many souls astray. The world will be engulfed in a great darkness, and believers will face enormous spiritual opposition and temptations to compromise their faith. But those who stand firm in their faith in Christ will be preserved and delivered. Don't lose your focus on Jesus, my friend. Remember, He's our security. He's our hope. There is no hope anywhere else but in Him. The Bible tells us that with Christ in us, we have hope of glory. This means that there's a whole eternity of shame and regret awaiting anyone who turns away from or lives their lives apart from Christ Jesus. When Jesus told the parable of the ten virgins, He called five of them wise and the other five foolish. Yes, they were all virgins, connoting purity, which is a symbol of the Christian faith. However, what made some wise and some foolish 
was that one group carried extra oil that would keep their fire burning, and the other didn't, and their lights went out before the arrival of the bridegroom. When they went out to get fresh oil and returned, they were too late, and the door was no longer open for them. In these last days, we need to ask God for more wisdom. The Bible tells us that wisdom helps us to redeem the time, to make the most of it so that we're not taken unaware. Who are the people the Bible calls wise people? The wise are not the ones who are just looking to see the signs of the Lord coming. They are not the ones who only call themselves believers. No, the wise are those who see the signs, but focus more on standing in the Lord than other things. You see, in these last times, many will fall asleep in the faith. Many more will be deceived and go after other things outside God. Yet you must decide to hold on to Jesus and stand on the word. Jesus told us that in the last days, many people will claim to be the Messiah. Some will come in the Lord's name and will deceive many. But as followers of the Lord, we must remember that our Lord already told us about this. We must never be tricked by them. Remember that Jesus said that on that day, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter his kingdom. He said only those who do the will of the Father will enter. We ought to live our lives like people who are ready for the Lord's return at any moment, waiting for him to fulfill his promise to us. Let us rejoice each time we think about this. Why? Because like a bride and groom longing to see each other on the day of their wedding, the saints will be united with the Lord forever when he comes for us. So keep your eyes on Jesus, dear friend. Keep seeking Jesus, knowing him, praying, and walking in his word. For us to survive, we must be filled with and led by his spirit. If the Lord's spirit lives in you, he will guide you in Christ Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light. Do everything in your power and with faith in God's power, not to miss heaven. It's the only place to be. There, you won't have to deal with those things we deal with every day on the earth. In heaven, there are true peace, true freedom, and limitless possibilities. Not for only a few years, but for all eternity. And then there's hell. Many people who didn't believe in heaven or hell only ended up finding out later. Hell's not a place you want to go. It's pain and sorrow and torment forever. Keep declaring your faith boldly and praying for the unsaved to turn back to the Lord. Focus all your time and energy on making Jesus your center. When you do this, the signs will be clearer. Your focus will be keener. And you can draw more and more grace from the Lord to remain standing until He comes and takes us to be with Him in heaven forever. Matthew 24, 6 through 8 says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. The end of the age is closer to us now than when these exact words were spoken by Jesus to his disciples, warning them of the events that would unfold before the end finally comes. This passage is being fulfilled right before our eyes with today's trend of events. This passage reveals the activities that will accompany the rapture, Christ's reappearance on the earth. It contains a lot of information about the events that will unfold. These events will certainly come to pass before the end will finally come. The events contained in the prophecies have great similarities with the events around us today. However, some churches and denominations in the past have predicted a whole range of events that they believe should come to pass before Christ returns. In their opinions, the prophecies associated with the end of time will come shortly before the return of Christ rather than as the fulfillment of the prophecies, as others believe today. Could it be that the second coming of Christ will be like his first coming? You see, 
When Christ came to earth the first time, his own people, the Jews, failed to recognize him as the one who was prophesied to come. Will there be a repeat of this when Christ returns for his spiritual people? Jesus spoke about the wise and foolish virgins to caution us about those who will not be ready for his return and will thus be shut out of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 3 says, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? This question from the disciples tells us that the end will come with signs and Jesus affirms this by telling them the signs that will precede his appearance. Jesus began to tell them of the events that would unfold so that no one who believed would be taken unaware. Jesus' words are a guide to what will happen before the end of the age, which we should follow to the letter. Here are some of the end time prophecies as spoken by Jesus himself. 1. There will be wars, earthquakes, plagues, and famine. Luke 21, 9-11 tells us, When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. In recent years, all over the world, wars have broken out and have affected the lives of many. Jesus spoke about this when he specifically said, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. A very recent example is the war between Russia and Ukraine. Other countries of the world are experiencing some form of war as well, both internally and externally. There have been massive earthquakes in different cities around the world and this has been happening more frequently in recent times. Lives, property, and nation's economies have been hit and much has been lost. Do you know that there have been a total of 7,630 earthquakes alone in 2023? Yet, we are still in the middle of the year at this moment. Most people may not notice these things, but they are the signs of the fulfillment of biblical prophecies taking place right before our eyes. Indeed, my friend, the Lord is coming. What about the different plagues and their variants breaking out recently? For instance, look at the novel coronavirus, which broke out in Wuhan, China in 2019 and changed normal life as it spread throughout the world. A total of 6,947,192 deaths have occurred worldwide as a result of this pandemic, popularly known as COVID-19. Furthermore, there have been severe outbreaks of locusts in East Africa, as well as numerous forest fires in Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, among many other nations, between September 2019 and now. As many as 828 million people around the world were affected by famine in 2021, and nearly 37 million people are at risk of starvation globally today prophecies are being filled right before our eyes. And these things suggest the second coming of Christ might be fast approaching. 2. Celestial anomalies appear. Revelation 6.12 says, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. There have been instances of the moon turning blood red in recent years. For example, between the year 2014 and 2015, a series of four blood moons occurred, and on January 31st, 2018, there was a super blue blood moon, which appears once every 150 years. Also, a blood wolf moon appeared in January 2019. There have been many solar eclipses, such as the eclipse in Singapore on December 26, 2019, and in Chile. The fulfillment of this prophetic sign is apparent in these phenomena as revealed by the Holy Scriptures. Here is what the prophet Joel had to say about these kinds of events, as inspired by the Spirit of the Lord. Joel 2, 30 and 31. 
I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. 3. The gospel will spread all over the world. In Matthew 24, 14, the Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Never in the history of humanity have people had the opportunity and prospect of preaching the gospel like they can today. This is one of the closing prophetic signs as revealed by Jesus himself. And it is now evident that the gospel is traveling across the earth much faster than we think. Technological advances have sped this biblical prophecy, where the gospel will reach people and places it would have taken longer to get to. This confirms the fact that a few years from now, it will be possible to say everyone on earth has heard the good news of Jesus Christ. For instance, the internet today affords us the opportunity to preach the gospel to nations even without getting into those nations. The message of the gospel can be shared through various platforms and through different media without the preacher getting into those places. This would not have been possible without the aid of technology. Some nations prohibit Christianity and its beliefs within their territories and could even go so far as persecuting believers who attempt to practice their faith within their borders. It is widely believed that this particular prophecy comes last because it is an opportunity for people to hear the message of the gospel before the end of time so that no one will have an excuse at the close of the age. When Jesus commanded his disciples to go and teach all nations, it meant that every nation of the world must have the opportunity to hear the message of the gospel and in turn be provided the opportunity to choose to believe in Jesus as the Son of God and as humanity's Savior. After the resurrection, the Holy Spirit led, empowered, and inspired those who followed the Lord Jesus to witness Him to the world. Today, Christians like you and I have spread all over the world. Even in major countries of the world where Christianity is not allowed, tens of millions of people have accepted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, we can conclude that the gospel has spread and continues to spread throughout the world. We can see that some of the signs of Christ's return are being fulfilled today. Now, seeing now that it is evident that we live in the days of the fulfillment of these biblical prophecies, what must we do as we await the return of the Lord? The Lord himself gave us the answer to this question long ago in John 16, 12 and 13. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. He will tell you what is to come. One very needful thing in these last days is for us to find the Spirit's voice in his words to the churches and learn to listen, obey, and submit to that voice, just like the patriarch Noah did. You see, in a day much like ours, Noah was able to find the voice of God, listen to it, and obey it. And this delivered him from the destruction that was coming. Jesus also likened his return to the days of Noah. Listen to this. Some people may ask, so how do we find the voice of God? In Matthew 25, 6, Jesus said, At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Today, Jesus continues to call us as his people to hear his voice, follow his words, and live his life. He would not have any of his own parish, and hence has given us an in-depth revelation of the things to come before the end of the age. God, in his wisdom, has chosen to reveal these events to us, as well as allow you to come across this video today, so that you and I may have hope through the comfort of his words. Soon, everything will be over. Soon, we will be with our Lord. Soon, we will no longer suffer under the conditions of a world ruled by darkness. Our big concern should be to make sure that, since these prophecies are being fulfilled, we commit ourselves to live our lives 
in the light of the commands of the gospel, a life that absolutely surrenders to the Word of God. We should also herald the message of our Lord Jesus Christ to all nations, proclaiming that in Christ there is hope even for the hopeless. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? If not, now is the time to receive Him. There is a place for you in His family. He has not ruled you out yet. His invitation is still open. And as He promised, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call on Him to save you today? Tomorrow might just be too late, my friend. Get ready for what is coming. The devil does not want you to see this message because he knows that his time is short. Many people are already sealed in his deception forever. It is no longer news that the earth has become a troubled place. What do you see when you turn on the TV or news app? It is always one trouble after another, one violent crisis after another. Wars, crimes, natural disasters, and man-made disasters are everywhere you look. It makes you wonder, where are we headed? But what if I told you that you already know the answer to that question? I am not going to sugarcoat it in any way. We and everyone on earth are headed towards the end of the world and to judgment. No matter how long you may have been hearing about God's judgment, one day, that day will come. And when it does, it will no longer be a question of whether it is true or not, but of whether you believed it enough to prepare for it or not. No one can escape God's judgment. No one can escape meeting their Maker when that great day comes. If you read the book of Revelation 20, 11 through 15, the Bible tells of the great white throne of judgment. This is the judgment for every person on earth, great or small, rich or poor, dead or alive. Before this judgment seat, the Bible says there will be two books. One of the books will have records of things each person did on earth and the other book will be the Book of Life. This Book of Life will be the determining factor for who enters heaven and who gets thrown into the lake of fire. The Bible explicitly says that anyone whose name isn't in the Book of Life will be thrown into the fire. Hence, the only people who have a hope of passing the great white throne of judgment are those who received Jesus Christ and followed Him while they were on earth. In other words, only true children of God will pass the great white throne of judgment. Then the Bible also talks about another kind of judgment seat as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.10. The Amplified Bible puts it this way, For we believers will be called to account and must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or bad, that is, each will be held responsible for his actions, purposes, goals, motives, the use or misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. And here is something you may not know, or maybe haven't given much thought to, but everyone that dies before Christ comes at the rapture will go to meet their own judgment. Thus, the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. Why do you need to know this information? Because one day, you will stand before God's judgment seat. What hope do you have that you will pass when God judges you? You see, like I said at the beginning of this video, everything happening in the world today is pointing towards a final point in our existence on Earth. Scientists and even philosophers have predicted that a day is drawing closer that humanity will destroy itself with its inventions and evil intentions. Either that, or the Earth will no longer be inhabitable. You may have also noticed how many of the big hit movies have themes of a post-apocalyptic world, where the civilizations of Earth are completely wiped out, with only a few survivors. These apocalyptic events range from climate change, an astronomical impact event, nuclear holocaust, resource depletion, epidemics, or even an alien invasion. Somehow, it seems the devil is preparing the minds of people in the world 
to get used to and embrace a lie that life on Earth would be okay and return to normal no matter what happens. You see, the difference between these fictional depictions and reality is that a day is truly coming which will change the whole course of history. This day will precede the final judgment of God on Earth. It is called the Rapture. You may not believe this, but the Rapture will be a cataclysmic event which surpasses any this world has ever witnessed. Scientists talk about the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals on Earth. The Bible also talks about the deluge, that is, the flood of Noah that wiped out every living being on Earth that wasn't in the ark. Now, before the final strike that will end all things in fire, as the Bible says, the rapture will be a world-changing event that will be accompanied by much destruction. Think about this. What do you think will happen to a plane whose pilot is a believer and gets caught up instantly while the plane is still in the air? What about vehicles that will be on the highway with passengers, doctors in the surgery theater, a crane operator lifting a large load above property and people, or a person cooking in their home? The list could go on. You see that there will be chaos all around the world in the same day. Millions upon millions of people will be missing without a trace. There will be riots, trauma, deaths, and many losses. But at the rapture, every true child of God will be taken up from the earth. We won't be here to witness all of these things. The Bible puts it this way in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. The world's systems do not know what to do with this. They won't turn to the Bible to confirm that the rapture has taken place. Rather, they will leap into action to cover it up with one lie after another to promote the agenda of the Antichrist, who will institute the one world government and bring everyone to put on the mark of the beast. They may call this a form of census or numbering system with benefits, and of course, many will go with it, sealing their fate for all eternity. I cannot tell you what will happen after the rapture takes place, except by speculation. I am more interested in telling you that, no matter what, you must not miss this event. The Lord Jesus has already told us of events that will lead to this great day when he will come for his saints. Matthew 24, 4-14 Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false witnesses will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Aren't these things already being fulfilled before our very eyes today? Indeed, that great day of God's judgment is fast approaching. When it comes, no amount of money, fame, Instagram or TikTok followers, selfie likes, properties, or awards will save your soul. Only one thing will save you on that day, and your eternity will depend on that one question. Did you receive the Son and the life He offered? Your eternity truly will depend on your relationship with Jesus here on earth. I am not talking about your relationship with church. You may be going to church, and you should be going to church. 
But being a member of a church is not the criteria for escaping the judgment and destruction of the earth. Being born into a good Christian family, having a Christian name, or having a good moral upbringing won't save you either. Only one thing will save you. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Take note of those words. Whoever believes in the only Son, Jesus, shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is your access into God's kingdom, my friend. There is no other way. If there was, the Bible would tell us. Jesus already said He is the way, and no one can come to the Father except through Him. Dear Saint, as you listen to my voice right now, I want you to be encouraged and rejoice. The world is not your home. You may be feeling discouraged and alone right now, but do not give up the faith. Don't give up the fight against the darkness that is encroaching on this world today. Do not give in to their compromises. Instead, stay with Jesus. Stand in the truth of what God's Word says. There is a hope that no money can buy and no robber can steal. It is a hope that Christ has prepared a place for you in heaven. I haven't been to heaven yet, but with what I have read from the scriptures and those whom the Lord has blessed with visions of the kingdom, it is a place to look forward to. There you will have no more sorrows, tears, weaknesses, sicknesses, taxes, or fear. Everything will be wiped away. A brand new life, a fresh new start, and all the privilege of walking within the glory of God permanently for all eternity will be yours. If you are not saved, I invite you to a relationship with Jesus and ask Him to forgive your sins and give you His eternal life. Invite Him to come into your heart and take the seat of authority as Lord and Savior. Remember that only then do you receive the right to be a child of God, and only then will you receive the hope of eternal life. When our time on earth is finally done, this is the promise we hold on to as children of God, and it is a promise you must never let go of. Colossians 2, 17. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of His mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory.